You know, when Kyrie Irving got injured in game one of the NBA Finals, it happened in overtime, in retrospect, it turned out to be the worst thing that could have happened for the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, I said that correctly. Cleveland's all-star Kyrie Irving, you know, who, who did everything he could in game number one, had a nice scoring game, but got hurt early in overtime in game one. His injury might have been the worst thing that could have happened for Golden State. Reason is because, look, if Cleveland's going to pull off the improbable and, and beat the favored Golden State Warriors, Cleveland cannot win this series by playing a Golden State Warriors type game, okay? Where they're going to score in the 110s to 120s and make a barrage of three pointers. Cleveland just does not have the talent. They don't have the personnel to do that. Other than other than LeBron James, they, they just don't have a guy that you could say, okay, yeah, he's for sure going to get us 20, 25 points. Yeah, J.R. Smith on a given night can do that, but not all the time. LeBron can. Golden State has too many scores for Cleveland to play that high-tempo style. So um, we saw in game number two, kind of like in game one, but more in game two than anything else, that this was going to be a game played to where defense was going to stand out. And, and it did stand out for both teams. I mean, neither Cleveland nor Golden State shot above 40%. In the case of Cleveland winning this game with only 32% field goal shooting, when was the last time you saw that? And we'll get into reasons later why that happened. But for the Cavs, they proved that they are not only alive and well in this series, but right now they got the momentum and for sure have the home court advantage with, um, if, if it goes to six games, three of the next four games um, at Quicken Sloan Arena in Cleveland. Very hard to, um, to beat Cleveland there. And so far, Golden State's finding it difficult to beat Cleveland no matter where they play them. Um, game one, that overtime win, but game two, um, we just shocked as I am the way this game was going that this thing even got to overtime. But um, several reasons why Cleveland pulled this thing off, and of course, number one was, as I mentioned, the pace of the game. Cleveland doesn't mind taking almost every second off the 24-second shot clock with possession, even if they don't score, okay? Because the one way you frustrate a team that led the league in scoring like Golden State did, which led to their 67 wins league best, is by slowing it down, getting them out of rhythm, getting them frustrated. And there was a a time late in the third quarter where Cleveland had back-to-back 24-second shot clock violations, and yet, if you're you know if you're really tuning into the game, you at that point still don't think that Cleveland's screwing themselves entirely. Um, obviously, more time expanded by a team means less time for that opposition to do what they need to do. And then on the defensive side, in the meantime, you know the Cavs really um, made Golden State you know shoot those mid-range to long shots. Um, really negating a part of the paint, and also, too, at the same time, um, you know, living and dying, perhaps thinking that, you know, Steph Curry at some point is going to get his points. Part of it was Curry, you know, shooting about as bad of a game as I've ever seen him shoot, and this is MVP year, 5 of 23, only one three-pointer made in the game, and in overtime, um, he did in overtime what Cleveland nearly did in overtime in game one, that is not score. Other than that late bucket that LeBron got in the first overtime of game one, and at that point didn't mean anything, Curry didn't hit anything in overtime. And part of that could have been because of the fact that, you know, he wasn't feeling or the fact that he he expanded so much energy on defense, just like everybody else did. And offensively, it really took its toll for both teams. But um, part of it, too, you got to really credit uh, the play of uh, Matthew Dellavedova as well. Um, You know, Matty. Got the start in place of Kyrie Irving. This is why I said in the beginning of my show why I thought the injury to Kyrie Irving, you know, could have been the worst thing, not for Cleveland, but for Golden State. Because now Cleveland can really emphasize team defense, knowing that, you know, even when Irving was productive, um, he was not 100%. The leg, uh, the knee was was truly an issue, and that that was uh, further illustrated and confirmed with his three- to six-month injury. diagnosis after game number one. So now you know you're not going to have Irving. Yeah, you lose a little offense, but now you have Della Vadova who specializes in defense anyway and is healthy anyway and can be pesky anyway, and Curry is finding that out. So Curry said at the end of the game that, hey, it's just one game. Um, he, he, he said also, too, that he has to keep shooting you know, to, to, to figure it out. 
all I have to say is we'll see in game number three. Because game number three, I know it's a best four out of seven, but game three you get the feel that if the Cavs, in fact, win it, it's going to be because, again, Curry uh, did not step up to the plate and that Della Vadova was a factor. And, again, the game was an 80-90 to 90 point um, outcome for the winner, meaning this thing was played at the Cavs' pace to where the three-point shot was not going to dictate the game. And, by the way, neither team shot the three extremely well at all. And in the case of Curry, um, good golly, for the game, you know, for, for a guy who's had such a, such a great year and has such a sweet shot, um, he only shot 22% from the field and shot even worse than that from three-point range. Heck, he even missed a free throw, and my gosh, I thought the world was going to stop when that happened because you never see him do that at all. After all, he was 91% for the year, so seeing him miss a free throw is, uh, is about, as, about as rare as anything in life. And and Curry, again, he looked human, and part of it was Della Vadova, part of it was the the pace of the game because of the defense, and part of it was Curry himself because you know he hasn't always played great in these playoffs. Um, as we saw toward the end of the uh, toward the end of the Houston series, you know he's he's shooting you know mediocre. Uh, game one he shot about fifty percent, but uh, of, the, of the finals. But game two, um, you know, it, it, just like everything goes through LeBron with another you know another triple double in these playoffs, and you know in the finals thirty nine points on a night where he didn't shoot good at all. But again, you know, I think only one player on the night for for Cleveland made more shots than they missed, and that was. Um, and that was Mozgov, you know, and, and Mozgov's had two solid games now for, for the Cavs. But, again, Cleveland doesn't mind if they don't have great shooting so long as the pace of the game is that they're lacking and the rebounding favors them. And, and that's where you win so many games is rebounding. You look at so many of the past champions in the NBA, they did it like, you know, like Houston in the mid-1990s, of course, Chicago with their front line. You know, people forget that Showtime with the Lakers in the 80s, you know, they, they had terrific rebounding as well. And, of course, those Pistons teams um, knew a thing or two about rebounding as well from the late 80s and, of course, the, uh, the 2004 version of the Pistons in San Antonio, who, who was the ultimate in team basketball, made rebounding, you know, a, a top priority as well. And Cleveland's doing that right now, you know, killing Golden State on the boards last night. And, you know, J.R. Smith didn't start the game. I think only had nine points, but hey, he played a lot better than he did in Game One, and, that, and that's and that's primarily what they needed too. Tristan Thompson becoming a force on the glass, and again, Cleveland getting offensive boards, able to keep possessions going, and just absolutely frustrate Golden State. If it wasn't for Clay Thompson of Golden State, this game would have been decided much earlier, and it wouldn't even gone to overtime. Thompson was spectacular, but but he was it. He had he had you know a thirty plus point game, but again, Curry only had nineteen. And we're going to find out, you know, games three and four, you know, if Golden State, if this continues to be a trend or if they can, you know, get tougher, you know, try to get to the foul line more often because they make their money at the foul line as well. And they shot good at the foul line last night as a team, but we're not seeing them get there near as often as well. And by the way, Golden State set a finals record for most attempted threes in the game. I think they had 35 attempts. Doesn't mean anything though if you can't if you're missing most of them, and if it leads to your demise in game two, and that's what happened. So we'll get ready for uh, game number three Tuesday night at Cleveland. Game four will be Thursday at Cleveland as well, with game five on uh, on Sunday coming back to uh, Golden State. And win or lose, you have got to commend Cleveland. You got to commend the Cavs for making this their brand of basketball that still Golden State um, has had difficulty with. And it went to overtime, by the way. And we did see Curry at times show brilliance, but very rarely. And, again, uh, Dilla Vidova did a wonderful job. And I'm telling you, now people believe that, that the Cavs can pull it off. Of course, every game has its own identity. So game three, we're going to find out if LeBron and company can uh, take a series late now if they have home court or if uh, game two is just an aberration for Curry and for these Warriors and if the Warriors can start looking like that team that won 67 games and lost just 15 during the regular season. We'll find out Tuesday from Cleveland. See ya.